bit by bit, CASJ is waking people up through education, advocacy, and training so that they too can be part of the important work that needs to be done in our communities. Definitely, our organizations in Winnipeg and in other Canadian cities, for that matter, can learn from CASJ. In Winnipeg, where I'm from, we have a thriving Filipino community that can mobilize politically and financially. But despite this, our progressive organizations are few. We are still very weak at doing research and organizing that CASJ does handily. Our Winnipeg group can certainly learn from CASJ's methods. So again, this evening, I'd like to congratulate and thank CASJ board members, members, volunteers, for the inroads and difference you are making here in the GTA. Hey, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, Cassie. This evening's organizers asked me to speak a little bit about myself tonight. My experiences as a Filipina immigrant and as a mainstream politician. They also asked me to relate my challenges and successes in balancing priorities of activist work with the pressures and duties of life as an elected official. I must confess that entering politics never even crossed my mind until that fateful afternoon four years ago when I jumped into politics head first. The province of Manitoba was already two weeks into an election campaign. The new Democratic Party was attempting to, and would later go on, to win a third consecutive majority, majority term under one of the most popular premier, uh, premiers of the province, Gary Dewar. But there was a little glitch. The party's nominated candidate for the constituency of Wellington had to bow out. Wellington is one of the poorest inner city ridings in all of Canada. It is a seat that Manitoba NDP has held, has held for the past 35 years. One by one, the three nominated candidates did not pan out. Well, that fateful afternoon, that was to change my life. I was minding my own business, literally. The year before, I had retired from my day job and had opened a very, very small business at a local shopping mall. That afternoon, three high-ranking NDP members visited me and told me about their predicament with the Wellington constituency. Then they asked me if I wanted to be the NDP candidate for Wellington. They told me that they will help me secure a 20000 loan for campaign expenses and provide me with an experienced campaign manager. I asked for some time to think it over, but they gave me only one hour to decide. <laughs> well, you can imagine how very shocked I was. I phoned my husband Orly and my son Diwa, and they both told me, if you wish, go for it. I asked my church minister, Ray Cuthbert, for his advice, and he said, at the floor, you have enough integrity, go for it. I asked my daughter Malaya, and she had more reservations because of my previous health issues. Just a few years before, I was advised to go into semi-retirement by my doctor after I had a brain tumor. 
the size of my fist. By God's grace and the neurosurgeon's skills, the tumor was removed in an eight-hour operation. But that memory of my near-death experience helped me make my decision. Instead of semi-retirement, I decided to go for it. I thought to myself, I don't know how much time I have left on this earth, so I better do all I can now to live my life to the fullest and continue to live to help lift others up. So I did it. I called the NDP officials back and I said yes to their offer. And the rest of it, with a lot of hard work and community su support, followed along nicely. I won the election with uh, an overwhelming margin. Today, I'm the first ethnic female to be elected in the Manitoba legislature. <laughs> Two years later, I was asked to become a cabinet minister with a portfolio responsible for hundreds of millions of dollars a year. I hope there will be more of us uh, soon, most especially, meaning uh, people of ethnic backgrounds, most especially our sisters in the First Nations communities who desperately need to be represented in their own way. First hand, I can tell you that being elected into government, and especially in cabinet, you can make a difference in the communities you represent and in the projects you choose to pursue. As mentioned by uh, Ricky when uh, it was Sunday afternoon when the news of Andoy first uh, came to our attention. And right away, I sent Premier Dewar an email. Uh, the following day, he announced that uh, the province would uh, give financial assistance to the Philippines. But our communities still need more ethnic women representing them. I'm happy to say that my former constituency assistant, a young Filipina named Darlene Bautista in her late 20s, recently got elected as a school trustee. Hopefully we ethnic women are just starting or are just getting started now letting our voices be heard and acted upon. Hint, hint to someone who are here who might be thinking of, uh, um, thinking along these lines. When my family and I first immigrated to Winnipeg, it was definitely a hand-to-mouth existence. Uh, to us Filipinos, we're familiar with the term isang kahi, isang tuka. Within our first year here, or in Winnipeg, I was pregnant with our third child. And I was working as a secretary at a garment factory. My husband, Orly, had two part-time jobs as a dishwasher and as a security guard. A security guard with no gun, he always points out, only a walkie-talkie. We were not overly political or activist in Winnipeg at that time, but one of the very first things that I did in our newly adopted city was to join a local church. This became a way uh, to join the broader community. We joined the Disciples Church that later amalgamated with the Congregation of the United Church of Canada. Both church groups Welcome progressive thinking and action. Here I found an environment where community support and outreach was second nature. I was able to rise in the ranks, so to speak, and over the years I assumed positions on a national and international level. In doing the work of the church, I thrived. I certainly wasn't thriving in my workplace. At my day job, I was clerk for over 20 years. At my last place of employment, I worked at a local college in a windowless basement room. 
Even worse, there was no hope for advancement despite my many applications for better position. Uh, to start with, it took me five years already working in the uh, private sector before I even got an interview for a government job as a clerk. Like many new immigrants, I did these jobs to help pay for the bills and put food on the table for our five children, plus numerous relatives in Winnipeg and in the Philippines, whom we are providing some support. But still, I wanted to do more. Doing outreach church, outreach church work led me to more politically activist work. Orly and I decided to start the Philippine Times for our very first year of operation in 1966. Hermie and Mila Garcia kindly sent us the newspaper layouts for the Philippine Reporter, so our Philippine Times was literally modeled after their paper, both in style and intention. Orly and I decided to start the Philippine Times because we have had enough of the endless coverage of Filipino socials and movie gossips and hardly anything about important issues. So into the publishing world we went and we just like earlier, we jumped into this head first as well. It was truly a labor of love that did not make us any money whatsoever. We even had to advance personal funds. But here, as the publisher and editor, I was able to get out into the community covering events. More importantly, we were able to disseminate Philippine issues that would otherwise never get told in our community. As my children got older, I began to join other community organizations such, such as Project Peacemakers, Grassroots Women. My daughters who are taking political science courses in university tell me that this type of community involvement is called small p politics. Women, in particular, thrive in small p politics, in small p politics environment. The statistics show that this can eventually be a route for women to big p politics. The world of political parties, nomination contests, and election campaigns. But at the time, when I was getting involved in organizations, I had no intention of doing anything like that. My motivations were to address the needs I saw in the community. Looking back now, I was also trying to fulfill myself intellectually and emotionally. 